Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you and welcome to To Tell the Truth. And I find myself in a very peculiar position for a fellow who is supposed to be host, moderator, MC, whatever you choose to call it of this show, because I'm supposed to know about the contestants. But on this first spot, I do not know one thing about it. I do not know what the subject is. I do not know the person involved, which is very strange, but I'll try to explain that to you a little later as soon as I try to explain our panel here on To Tell the Truth. Bill Fuller. Peggy Cash. Dennis Sir. And Kitty Carlisle. Hey there, friends. Now, this is, this is really strange. Now, you remember I told you that I don't know anything about our first guest today, and I honestly don't, and, and thereby, I'm going to get a rare chance to leave this seat and go sit on the panel Great. today, which usually louses things up. And the reason we're going to do that is because one of our panelists does know the first guest and therefore would have to disqualify. And so, panel, which one of you knows the first guest? It's me. It's, it's I. It's I. It is I. <laughs> it is <laughs> Kitty Carlizzo. All right, Kitty, so now you come over mistake. here. You take oh. my spot. Oh. I'll try to play oh. the game. Oh. And we'll oh. change. Here is your new hostess and moderatess, Kitty Carlisle. Great. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I fell into the chair to start with. <laughs> I've always wanted to be the moderator on To Tell the Truth, and now I'm here, I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, well, it says here, the card says, uh, show a picture of uh, Gary. Of uh, me? Here it is. Oh, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. Isn't First that a year. wonderful caricature? It was done by one of the finest artists and caricaturists in America today, my friend Al Hirschfeld. Yeah. Now look carefully in Gary's hairline. Do you see the word? Nina printed yep, there? Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. Nina is Al Hirschfeld's daughter, and she's our first guest today. Let's meet her now. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Nina Hirschfeld. Number two. My name is Nina Hirschfeld. Number three. My name is Nina Hirschfeld. Panel, your job will be to find out which of these young ladies is the real Nina Hirschfeld. Listen while I read her story. I, Nina Hirschfeld, have had my name immortalized by my father. You see, my father is the famous artist and caricaturist, Al Hirschfeld. On the day I was born, my delighted father celebrated by putting my name cleverly hidden into a theatrical cartoon he was drawing. And that was the start of it all. From that day forward, each Al Hirschfeld drawing included the name of Nina at least once, cunningly concealed in such hiding places as tousled hair, ruffled petticoats, or potted plants. For instance, here is my father's drawing of Barbara Streisand in Funny Girl. You can see that there are two drawing, two of my father's, uh, you can see there are two Ninas in her pantaloon ruffles. Oh. <laughs> Uh, on this caricature of television's Jack Parr, there is one Nina formed by the hair on the left side of his head. And in this drawing of Lauren Bacall, there is a sideways Nina between her dangling earrings and her neck. There is one of my father's drawings that does not include any Ninas at all. Instead, my father put his own and my mother's name in the picture. And to tell the truth panel can't see this drawing until later because it's entitled Nina's Revenge. <laughs> and it's a picture of me. Signed, Nina Hirschfeld. <laughs> we'll be back to question my friend Nina Hirschfeld and her imposters right after a few commercials. All right, panel. All three of these young ladies claim to be Nina Hirschfeld, whose father, Al Hirschfeld, put her name into each of his wonderful pictures. Let's start the questioning with Peggy Katz. Thank you. Number two, what color is your mother's hair? 
Red. Thank you. Number three, what's your mother's name when it's not Mrs. Hirschfeld? Dolly Haas. Thank you. Uh, number one, your mother once starred in a show, sort of a Chinese play. Do you remember? You wouldn't remember it, but do you know the name of that? The Lute Song. Thank you. Uh, number two, how long does it take your father to do one of these drawings? Oh, anywhere from one to three days. Oh, yeah? Maybe. Uh, number three, what does he work on? What kind of um, materials? He, he normally works on sketch pads that he keeps in his pocket. The night that he will go to the theater, he will have a sketch pad with him. Thank and you. And this is where he starts. And is, number one, does he work in, uh, is it like pen and ink, or is it uh, charcoal, or is it just pencil? Pen and ink. Thank you. <laughs> never give enough Thank you, Peggy. And now, Bennett, sir, my dear friend. Kitty, you look so different from John Charles Daly. I, can't. <laughs> I, I must admit, I met Nina Hirschfeld when she was about four years old, and I haven't the faintest idea what she looked like then, so I don't feel I have any advantage. But I would like to ask number two, what newspaper does your father's pictures appear in? It's the New York Times. Uh, number three, uh, the Hirschfelds are famous for giving parties. What, what kind of, what's the most famous party that they give every year? Their New Year's party, definitely. Number one, do they still give those parties? Occasionally. The New Year's party? Sometimes. Sometimes. Number two, uh, who is the most famous drama, drama critic outside of the times that your father is a friend of? Oh, I guess Walter Kerr, probably. Yeah. Gary Moore. Oh, Gary dear. Moore, now a panelist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whichever one of you is, Miss Hirschfeld, I have met your father on two or three occasions. He's a completely charming gentleman, and I hate him. <laughs> and the reason for it is, you know, that as people grow older, their faces become used-looking. And Al Hirschfeld was the first person ever to caricature me with bags under my eyes. <laughs> and he was absolutely correct, you know, yes. but I, up to that point, I would hope that I was the only one who'd noticed it. How old were you then, 12 or 13? <laughs> well, precocious 10. Did your father... <laughs> Gary, I must say you have contributed a great deal to this particular... Have an eye, that's... Well, it's your turn, Bill. All right. All, I want to go on record and say the only thing Gary has made known is that he has bags under, <laughs> under his eyes, and we know that. Uh, number, number two, uh, Nina's Revenge, the, the uh, caricature your father did of you that you're going to show us later. What's the theme of that thing? What, what, how does Nina's uh, Revenge take, its, take place? Well, it's a picture of me, and I'm getting even at my father for all the Ninas that he's put in his different sketches. So there's... Uh, number one, I, I hear the Hirschfelds are very, give very famous parties, especially their New Year's <laughs> Eve party. How come I've never been invited? <laughs> Maybe you'll be invited next time. Thank you very much, number one. That's one way of getting invited. <laughs> <laughs> all right, panel, it's time Robert, to vote. Chloe. And you must mark your ballots and vote for number one, number two, or number three. We pay $50 for each wrong vote and $500 if the panel is stumped completely. Peggy, for whom did you vote? Well, well, Cheech. Oh. I, <laughs> I didn't expect to see it on the card so quickly. Uh, well, number one knew that Dolly Haas starred in Lute Song, and uh, indeed she did it. She was marvelous in And also, she looks like Dolly Haas, so I voted for Nina Hirschfeld, number one. Bennett? Well, I'm afraid I also voted for number one because uh, she looks more like the Hirschfields than the other two girls. Uh -huh. And I based it on that. And Gary? I wouldn't know her without a beard, but uh, I'm going to go along with the group for a different reason, which was when the question of the parties were brought up, she looked slightly embarrassed because I suppose that uh, none of us have ever been. Oh, some of us haven't. Oh, some of us haven't. Bill and I have not been. No, me either. I never get to go anywhere. No. And Bill Cullen, are you going to join everybody? No. I voted for number 11. Uh, <laughs> no, I voted for number one, two, and mine was pure guess. No more than that. As it many times is on this show, it was pure guess. What am I supposed to ask? No. Oh, <laughs> I didn't understand that one. The first thing you'll notice is don't pay any attention to the producer. Oh, you should have told me ahead of time. <laughs> all right, the votes are all in, and uh, we'll see if we're right or very wrong. 
Will the real Nerna, Nina Hirschfeld? Very good. Very good. I was going so well. Uh. <laughs> Will the real Nina Hirschfeld please stand up? Ah, oh, that's my girl. <laughs> Nina, we'll be back to you in a minute. Uh, you couldn't fool the panel, but you were wonderful. Number two, you didn't get any votes, but what's your real name and what do you really do? I'm Muriel Franklin. I'm a photographer's model in New York. And number three, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Celine Geller and I organize tours for the International Hotel in Las Vegas. Remember, Nina said there's a picture of her by her father called Nina's Revenge. Now we can see it. And Nina, will you please point out to us where your father put his own and your mother's name? Hmm. Oh, I see Dolly. Dolly is oh, in the in hair. hair. And my father's name is in the leg. Al. 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 Yes. 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 <laughs> Thank you so much, Nina, and Impostors, for playing to tell the truth with us. Well, Gary, that's about as far as I can go. <laughs> How did I do? I want to tell you, I'm so delighted that you made a couple of mistakes because imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. <laughs> Otherwise, I want my job back because I'm better at it. You come over here. Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> I started to say I want my job back because I'm better at it. I'm better at it than I am at being a panelist. We'll be right back after a few commercials. This guest on the Tell the Truth is a gentleman who commutes to work every day, not by train power, not by horsepower, but by leg power. And let's meet him right now. Number one, what is your name, please? My name's Eugene Sloan, and this is a penny farthing or high wheeler which used to be popular in the 1870s. Number two. Well, my name is Eugene Sloan, and this is a Schwinn Suburban bicycle, which is popular in the 1970s. Number three. My name is Eugene Sloan. This is the original prototype of the modern bike, called a Drazienne, after its inventor, Baron Karl von Dres. All right, now here is Eugene Sloan's story. It goes like this. I, Eugene Sloan, firmly believe that bicycling is both the healthiest and most pleasurable form of exercise. A devoted cyclist myself, I have written the complete book of bicycling. In it, I tell about the comparative merits of various makes and types of bikes, how to repair a flat tire or a fouled up brake, and how to prepare for a bicycle trip through the country or around the world. When the bicycle was first invented, it was a rich man's plaything. Today, however, the bicycle offers practical answers to the problems of air pollution from the automobile, congestion on the highways, and the need for healthful exercise. As a matter of fact, the eminent heart specialist, Paul Dudley White, has suggested bicycling as preventative medicine against high blood pressure, strokes, and heart attacks. Signed, Eugene Sloan. Let's start with a gentleman who happily has had none of those things, Mr. Ben and Sir. Well, now, as a publisher, I'm interested, number one, in who published your book? Trident Press in this country. Trident Press. Number two, uh, I was recently in, sh in Chicago, where I uh, know on the program, Eugene Sloan was also present. I don't remember which one it was. But what was the name of the bookstore in Chicago that had this? Affair. Crock and Ventano's. Number three, uh, what is the difference between an American and an English bicycle? There's practically none. They all use the same materials. It just depends on who puts it together. Number one, isn't there some difference in the, difference in the brakes of an English and an American bicycle? No, there are basically two types of brake, either the caliper or the coaster brake, and they're used in both countries. 
Number two, do you? Thanks, you, Bennett. And Kitty? Number three, you said the name of your bike and it sounded like Drazy Ann. Is that possible? It's Drazy Ann, right. Oh, Drazy Ann. After Baron oh, Drazy. Drazy Ann. Um, number two, when you ride a bicycle, do you ride with the traffic or against it? I ride with the traffic. I see. You know, you're going the same direction they're going in. Uh, number <laughs> one. <laughs> All right, I didn't get it straight. Um, I'm, un I'm unstrung from the last spot. You want my job back? <laughs> no. <laughs> Number one, in which country is bicycling used most as a, fo a form of ordinary urban transportation? Holland. Holland. Uh, number two. Thank you, Kitty. And let's go down to Bill Cullen. You know, Kitty started a question <clears throat> which I'd like to continue. Number three, when you ride a bicycle here in Manhattan, do you ride with or against the flow of traffic? In Manhattan, I ride with, but there are some states that have laws saying you must ride against. And, and number one, uh, how do you go here in Manhattan? Uh, not being an American, I haven't had the problem. You're very, I mean, all right, good. Uh, uh, no, the, the reason I mention is so many bicycles. Number two, why is it that bicycles can go against the traffic, they can go through stoplights here in Manhattan and frequently do without anybody doing anything about it? I, I understand the police are powerless to do anything. Why is that? They are not powerless, but most people think of bicycles as children's toys, and who wants to arrest a child? Uh, <laughs> That's Number three, when, when it is a, an adult using that child's toy, uh, going against the traffic at the height of the rush hour here in Manhattan and thereby causing some difficulty, uh, why is it the police can't do anything about it? They are liable to tickets, but usually they can get away so easily in the traffic that they can't be Thank you. And okay, that Peggy, you look positively anguished. No, no, no. Number two, uh, do you believe that bicycles are, are an answer to the congestion of New York? Definitely. Well, then, number two, I want to ask you, supposing you lived in New Jersey and you had to cross the George Washington Bridge on a windy day, by the you'd be going in swimming. I'd take a cab. Oh, well, that's no fair, since if you go to recommend bikes. I mean, number three, what do you do about going across bridges? Well, I live in Massachusetts, so I don't have to worry about too many bridges But, my dear, you're recommending that New Yorkers ride bicycles. I certainly don't mean to be contentious, but, uh... <laughs> oh, no! But, I mean, if we're going to ride bikes, we're going to get blown off the Brooklyn Bridge, if that's the way you come into work. Well, it depends on the gale force. <laughs> if it is, if it's safe today, Mom. I don't know. Well, anyway, uh, number one, what bike do you recommend for a person like me in, to ride around New York in? I would say probably the touring bike. Thank you. And number number two, uh, do you have to have a light? Okay, okay, Peggy. Everybody's had their crack at it. How about you at home? Have you made up your mind? What would you say? Would you say number one? Or would you perhaps say number two? Or would you elect for number three? If you were on the panel, it would cost you $50 for a wrong vote, $500 if all of the votes are wrong. And Bennett Cerf, we'll start with you, if you don't mind. Well, I have a feeling that I met this gentleman out at Croc Bentown's in Chicago, and I think the only fair thing to do is for me to disqualify myself. Okay, we're having a lot of those this week. We got a disqualification, and a disqualification always, uh, always counts as a wrong vote. Thank you, Bennett, and let's go to Kitty. Well, I voted for number one because I think that the kind of bicycling that he does is done more abroad than it is here, and he sounds as though he were European. Okay, and Bill Cullen? I voted for number two uh, because he rides with the traffic. Unfortunately, a great many of Manhattan bicycle riders do not. But anyway, I voted for number two. And Peggy Cash, please. Well, I wanted to vote for number three, a person from my own Bay State, but I voted for number two because he was at that Croc Brentano bookstore, and I have a feeling that must be the real thing. Well, that's what you said he was. Well, what does that have to do with the way you look? <laughs> well, he looks okay. He did not say necessarily he was. He said that the real fellow was. I have a feeling he, he said that the real the name of a bookstore in Chicago if he wasn't there. All right, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Will the real Eugene Sloan please stand up? Hey, Peggy. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sloan. Let's check out number one. Number one, what was your real name, please, and what do you do? My name's John Lee. I'm an executive with Columbia Pictures. Had I known that, I would have voted for you myself, even without a vote. Number three, sir, what is your real name, please? My name is Martin Walsh, and I'm working for my master's degree in French at Assumption College in Worcester, Mass. Ah, uh, good luck.
Uh, Mr. Sloan, this is a remarkable display of bicycles. Where did you get them, if you don't mind my asking? They're, uh, the two older bicycles are from the Schwinn Museum of Bicycles, and the middle one is from the Schwinn factory in Chicago. Ah, so it's a whole Schwinn deal. We're, we're grateful to them. Which is correct? Do you go with the traffic or do you go, go against it? What is I, recommended? I normally go with the traffic, but this week I've been bicycling around New York, and I've found, discovered that if you go on the, on the side streets, the mm -hmm. ones that go between the two rivers, you're better to go against the traffic because traffic is going very slowly on those streets and you can see what's happening. But that's a, that's a very rare exception. I would definitely always go with the traffic. And always go with it. Yes. All right, there's the Voice of Experience, friends, and thank you all for being with us here on To Tell the Truth. <laughs> Get ready to play. Johnny Carson, Muhammad Ali, Barbara Streisand, Warren Beatty. You just never know who's going to drop by on What's My Line. And then... My name is Paul Newman, and I've got a secret. Join host Gary Moore and one of the funniest panels ever assembled for the most revealing game show in history, I've Got a Secret. Catch What's My Line at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, followed by I've Got a Secret, Sundays on Game Show Network. Raising soybeans is a full-time job. So is raising a family. Kate and I packed a lot of lunches, and we had to cut way down on Bill's chips. Then the Crisco folks came up with Olin, a way to fry up chips with less fat and fewer calories. Starts from crops like ours. Bill says they're so good, he doesn't miss the old ones. We've raised a lot of soybeans. Show Network play What's My Line, followed by Match Game and Tattletales. Hey, while you were away, Bennett Surf told me a marvelous thing. Bennett, pass it along to the audience. It's well, too good I to just want to show how observant I am. I disqualified myself. I thought it was number three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, the marvelous. He was so sure it was number three, he said, I won't vote, so I took a blank at the wrong guy. Nice try, though, Bennett, friends. We'll see you tomorrow. Come back. In addition to the cash awards, our central characters today will receive Para, Parasol wig, shaggy back, side tendrils, bangs, and a crown of curls, an easy care, 100% monocrylic wig from Carousel. Transportation and other considerations provided by Chevrolet, featuring the 1971 Impala with side guard door beams, more wheelbase, more glass, more sound denting materials, all at a Chevrolet price. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth. A Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. On Game Show.